This is continuous analog acquisition with analog output response using the DAC MX VIs, LabVIEW, and NI USB 6211. We'll get into programming this in just a minute, but first I'd like to show you our hardware setup. This is the USB 6211. We're going to take the analog output channel of this and feed it over to a power transistor that's in the base of this flywheel setup. That will then switch in 9 volts to this solenoid that's going to push on this offset flywheel. The flywheel will turn around and there are two magnets on the front of the flywheel. When this magnet right here comes in front of this Hall effect sensor, the Hall effect sensor will output a 5 volt value high. When the second magnet passes, the Hall effect sensor will output a low voltage or a zero voltage reading. That voltage reading will come back into the analog input channel right here, and that's our setup. Let's go ahead and jump into LabVIEW and program the first part of this demonstration. First thing I'm going to do is put down a graph. Now this graph is actually going to be used in the second part of our demonstration, but we're just putting it down to prepare for that. So I'll tell it not to auto scale. I'll tell the x-axis also not to auto scale, and I'm going to tell it to go between 0 and 1 because we're going to acquire just one second's worth of data. So that's it for our front panel. Let's go ahead and go to the block diagram and program up the application. The first thing that we want to do is our analog input. So I'll go ahead and get this VI. It says AI voltage, and this is going to create a virtual channel. We'll tell it which channels to get by creating a constant, and we'll browse on this and we'll see analog input channel 0. Let me move this over. Analog input channel 0, by the way, is this channel again right here, which is reading off of this Hall effect sensor over there. Okay. The next thing that we need to do is tell it what the input terminal configuration is. And we'll create a constant and we'll tell it reference single-ended. The second thing that we want to do is set up the timing. So I'll just drop the timing VI in here. And I'll bring up the help window so that maybe you can see this a little better. I'll set it right up here. What we want to do now is set the rate. So we'll create a constant. We'll set the acquisition rate. That's 1,000 samples per second that we'll monitor the Hall effect sensor at. We'll set the sample mode and we'll tell it to continuously acquire data. And then finally, we need to tell it how many samples per channel. It uses this information to set up the memory buffer size, and it's ready to go. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is start the acquisition. So this VI will start the acquisition up, and it's running. Let me go ahead and expand this out to full screen, because we're going to need the room as this program grows a bit larger. So there's a couple things I know I want to do, and I know I'm going to continuously read this, and I'm going to loop. So let me go ahead and get a loop structure, and we'll put it down here. And I also know I'm going to do some things sequentially, so we'll get a flat sequence structure. I'll put that in here as well. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is prepare to be able to move a pointer around in the buffer. And to do that, there's a read property node VI that we're going to put in right here. And if I wire into this, we can bring the task information over, and that'll be set up and ready to go. We're going to set things relative to some read points in the buffer. So I'll create a constant, and this is going to allow me to set where in the buffer I'm going to read. And I want to read relative to the most recent sample that we acquired. The next thing that I want to do is create another constant, and I'll just leave this as zero. So that's set up and ready to go. The next thing I want to do is perform the read itself. So I'll bring that in, and this will actually auto-wire. This is going to be analog, one channel, one sample, so that's good. And in fact, if we weren't going to change the buffers later, I would not have had to do this stuff here, but I'm just preparing to reset that in the second part of our demonstration. Okay, so that's good. We're ready to go. Let me create a little bit more room. And in fact, I'll clean it up just a bit so that it looks a little better for you to see. While I'm thinking about it, let me create the control here for the stop button so that that'll be ready to run when we've got it ready to go. The next thing that I'd like to do is shut the task down when we're done acquiring the data. So I'll wire the stop task up and that's ready. Okay, now we've got our one point acquired from our Hall effect sensor. What I'd like to do now is generate the analog output. So let me go create a channel. I'll tell it which channels it's going to be. So I'll create a constant here and this is going to be an analog output voltage. So in fact, I sort of did that backwards. Let me delete that 
first and let me change the analog output. So it's the analog output. So now when I go and I create this constant, it knows that they're output constants instead. So that's why I took that out of there. Okay, so that's good to go. You can start it up. So we'll just put that in there. And then we'll actually go and we'll perform the output task itself. So this is a DACMX write. I'm going to put this inside the loop right here. We're going to wire the task information over, and that just tells it which channels to output to. And then what I need to do is take the data that we acquire, and I'm going to feed that back in. But I'm going to do a little math in the loop here first, uh, although very little. It's going to be very basic. We'll come in down and get a multiply, so one of the most simplest things we can do. And I'm going to take the Hall effect reading. Remember, that's going to go 0 to 5 volts. So if it's 0 and I multiply it by a constant, it'll still be 0, and I'll output a low value or a 0 value. I'm going to multiply it by 2. So when this comes in at its high state, which is 5 volts, this will turn it into 10, and that's what we're going to output out the analog output right there. Okay, so that's good to go, and we're all set there. The last thing I'll need to do here is shut off my analog output, so I'll create a copy of the stop task by holding down the control key. I'll click this over, and we're going to be ready to go. Let me clean everything up so it'll expand it out a little bit, but it's pretty basic. So let's go back to the front panel and run our application. We'll close this down so that you can actually see the setup run. So I'll push the stop button and what I'm going to have to do is go over here and turn the flywheel by hand to actually get it started. Now what's happening as this magnet comes past the Hall effect sensor we digitize that and see that as 5 volts. We multiply the 5 volts by 2. That gives a 10 volt analog output that goes and it pushes the solenoid, but it only pushes while the Hall effect sensor is giving a high value. The next magnet comes along and gives it a low value, it stops pushing, and the momentum of the flywheel allows it to continue to turn and carry it back around to the next cycle. So in the second part of our demonstration, what we're going to do is allow you to see the signal that's coming off this Hall effect sensor, we'll digitize it, and we'll digitize it at a kilosample per second and display it in real time on this graph right here. So make sure you see that video. But that's how you would do continuous analog acquisition with analog response using the DACMX VIs and LabVIEW in the NIUSB 6211.